Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Anniversary show. We excited. Thank you so much for keeping with us tonight as we kind of do what we've been doing here tonight, celebrating, giving you what we give you week after week for the last year. We hope to continue doing it going forward. We just had uh, the fishbowl. We hadn't had it in a while. It's always good when Big Rube takes over the mic because he do the damn thing. Ain't no half stab with Marcus J. It's time for a segment that we affectionately like to call What the Hell? What the hell is going on? Now, normally when I do a what the hell, it's someone that's wilding out. Don't get me wrong. I got a couple of them, too. We got a couple of people that lost their damn mind. But before we do that, I want to do a what the hell for a situation that occurred in New York City. That was a good thing. And joining me on the live line as a personal friend of mine, we got Miss T on the line. She's a member of the New York Police Department who's going to kind of give us some insight into the situation. Miss T, how you doing, girl? Appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Now, you're a member of the New York Police Department. And last week, there was a story that came out about an officer by the name of Larry DePrimo, who Mm -hmm. was seen on video given by a tourist, giving shoes away to a homeless man. Now, oftentimes when we hear about police departments, not just NYPD, but just police departments across the country, you don't hear about a lot of the good things that they do. Uh, And we, of course, had another member of the NYPD in the past where we somewhat took her to task with some of the more uh, not so nice things that we've seen officers do. So now we have an opportunity where we can highlight something good. You know this officer personally, do you not? Yes. What can you tell us about this officer and this incident? Is this kind of thing common that just happened to get caught on tape? Um, I think, well, first of all, he's was always a pleasure to work with. Um, he, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that he would do something like this. Um, he's always very protective when I work with him. So I'm definitely not surprised. I think so that this was just something that happened. But his good deed just happened to be caught on a tape or a picture of it or what have you. And then it went viral. But um, you do have officers and I think people in general who do things like this. But of course, bad things that's what gets sensationalized but you don't always catch a person doing good so Mm -hmm. I think it was a great opportunity to have that caught and to show NYPD in a different light apparently it was a a a tourist uh from out of state that actually caught this that, that 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 made it go viral so I guess what you're saying is this is the kind of thing that is somewhat common it just happened to get caught on tape this time yeah, I mean, not that it's all the time, but I think it it does happen. Um, of course, no one's going to always see it or have a, a um, camera, I guess, to even want to take a picture. But I think it was good that it did get captured. Because you do have other people like that who, who will go out of their way and do things. Um, so I am glad that it was it was caught. And he's, he's a good guy. <laughs> he is, so we, I'm glad. We appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and talking to us about the story I definitely wanted to make sure at some point we got you to join us on the show and I'm glad that it was for something that was uh, that was very positive about the NYPD because as I stated before we had someone on in the past uh, and it wasn't you know quite as a fun conversation right. as this ended up being but uh, we appreciate it thank you so much for, for joining us tonight oh no problem and congratulations again we appreciate it thank you so much have a good night Okay, take care, Marcus. All right. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Uh, that was Miss T of the NYPD. Uh, what I want to do now is take an opportunity to uh, introduce someone else uh, who has joined us in the studio, who's joining us for her second time. She had so much fun. She came back in back to back weeks. We got your girl, Miss Toyana, on in, in studio with us. What's going on, girl? Yes. How you doing? I'm well. Big Ruby on my microphone. It's so good to see you. There's <laughs> <laughs> a love fest going on over there again. It is. It's so good to see you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Good. Today's Monday, thank God. Just got off from work, so. Wow, you work in the late hours like I, us. Yes, yes. Can you believe it? I drove straight from the office to be right here with you guys. So well, that's we, how much I love you. Well, we appreciate it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. What I 
want to do now. I know I had mentioned a minute ago that uh, we talk about some folks uh, typically in the what the hell segment that kind of lost their damn mind. And Big Rube, uh, you know who lost their damn mind? No, but I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me. Cat Williams done lost his damn mind. Again? Cat Williams done lost his damn mind. All right, let me set it up for you. <laughs> let oh, me gosh. set it up. Let me set it up for you. A little while ago, Cat Williams got in trouble for domestic violence, led the police on a slow speed chase. We heard about that one. About two weeks ago, Cat Williams got into it with uh, some fans on stage during a live show. There's YouTube video of it. Go look it up. Right. Those are enough to say that he done lost his damn mind. Right? Would you guys agree before I give you the next one? All right. Yep. Over the weekend or sometime in the last few days, Cat Williams is seen on surveillance video in a Target somewhere in Northern California. I guess the conversation he was having with the Target employee didn't go so well because whatever was said led to Cat Williams smacking this person across the face. Oh my goodness. After having smacked the Target associate across the face, Cat Williams flees the store, still on video. He then gets on a tricycle. He's on track. A tricycle. A tricycle because it has three wheels. I wanted to say it three times. He gets on a tricycle and he leads the police on a slow speed chase on the sidewalk in whatever city he's in. Yeah, Cat Williams. He done lost his damn mind. Miss 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 Tellyana, let me get your opinion on it. I mean, a lot of people seem to be fans of Cat Williams. Uh, I've never been a fan of Cat Williams. I thought he was funny when he first came out, but once he started doing that skit, with, uh, you know, first of all, he says the N word far too many times for me. One and two, when he did that skit with the with the with the nooses, I I, I was done with him. So, Miss Tellyana, what's your thoughts on Cat? As I just kind of set it up for Williams. you. Wow, that's the first response. Um. But I guess my second response is, where has he been? Maybe this is a gimmick or a publicity, uh, you know, something for publicity, I think. Maybe he's, maybe he's trying to, you know, find some avenue to get his fans to, you know, maybe he has some show coming out. I don't know. I, I, first of all, he's short. His hair is longer than mine. Um, he's hey, not attractive. Watch it on the short, guys. <laughs> what's, your, what's your thoughts, man? He could just be out of his damn mind. As I as I as I, as I, as I, I set it up a crack. minute ago, that's that's kind of what I said. He, I mean, first of all, <laughs> did he did he? <laughs> and, I, and I'm not trying to be rude when I say this. Did he slap her, or did he pimp slap her? It was it was a dude. It was a dude, and I didn't. See oh, it was a guy. It was a guy. I didn't see the slap on the video that I saw. Uh, I just heard about the after. I just heard about the aftermath. But but basically, that's that ended up being what happened. Wow, something's wrong with that dude. I mean, he's just doing a Martin Lawrence, you know? Go crazy for a little bit, lay low, then come out bigger. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Cat Wins. Joining us on the live line, we got Ain't No Half Stubbins on Miss Tony on the line. What's going on, girl? Hello, guys. Congratulations on your one-year anniversary. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, of course, the show wouldn't be the same if the last and final piece of the crew didn't join us on the line. So we appreciate oh, it. We appreciate thank you. It. Well, on the phone with me, I have someone special. Say hello, special guest. Hi, big brother. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Miss Katrina? How you doing? I'm doing good. I wanted to just, um, give you guys a shout-out and congratulate y'all. I'm sorry I didn't get to call in earlier on my way um, back to the bird from Maryland. Hey, listen. But, um, let me, let me, let me thank get... you so much. I'm so excited that you're able to do something. <laughs> that um, will allow you to be able to get more people and give them something to think about and do it in a fun and friendly way. I love it. Love your show. Love you. Love you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Miss. I didn't expect to hear from you. We appreciate it. Hey, listen. Uh, Tony, let me get your opinion on something. All right? Uh, real quick, and then we're going to let you go. Uh, Cat Williams. Had you heard the story about Cat Williams? Yes, I have. All right. Tell us your thoughts about Cat Williams. Too many drugs. <laughs> Everybody seems to think that it's a drug thing. So really, in all seriousness, is that what it is? It is. I mean, if you ever seen him, I mean, even I, I saw him live, and I mean, he he he's on drugs. He admits to smoking weed, but I mean, you know, of course, that's like the gateway drug. But 
He's he's too little to be trying all those powerful drugs. You gotta hang with Snoop. He's too small. <laughs> you can't hang with Snoop. Ain't no has stepping Marcus J. That was Miss Tony joining us, girl. Thank you so much for calling us. Thanks for being part of the show. We really mean it. And thank you. And you know, I'm so very proud of you, Carlton Banks, Big Groove. Y'all do a great job, and just keep on doing what you do. We appreciate it. Ain't no have stepping with Marcus J. That was Miss Tony on the line. Big Groove, real quick. Um, you know, I gave everybody an opportunity to make their point. I, not really fond of the short jokes with Cat Williams, but hey, look, it is what it is. But here's the thing. But here's the thing. But I ain't skinny. I'm sexy. But here's the, here's the thing with Cat Williams. Never really been a fan, but you you can't go and smack folk in the face at Target. I mean, you you just big road. You can't do it. Nah. I mean, how do you rational? I guess it's not rational, but like after he gets pulled after he gets pulled over, he jumped and hit him in the face. He the guys. Look, the guy is taller than he is. We are watching this. Okay, so you guys are looking at the video. Okay. Yes, right. he jumps up and slaps him. Okay, because I'm lo- I'm looking at y'all and I'm wondering what, like what the hell is going on. Okay, so so basic so basically they are looking at the video and obviously Big Rube and Miss Tariana are all broken up about it. Big Rube, after having seen it, because I haven't seen that part of the video, okay. you saw it. What's the deal? You know, straight up, man. There's some people that you know in life that you can physically assault. And then there's some people you know in life that you physically can't. You know, this dude, I guess, feels like he could physically assault this other dude. However, if that had been me, first of all, he didn't run after he hit him. He just backed up to see what was going to happen. He did. Now, I would have just, it would have been on. It would have been on. But as always, the second dude gets caught. So Yeah, we know that. We know that from football. Joining us on the live line is someone who is very, very, very special to me, my very first best friend on the planet. Very first best friend on the planet. Why don't you tell the Ain't No Half Stuff with Marcus J. Listeners who you are. Hello? Hello there, Marcus. How you, how you doing? I, I, set it up by say, I set it up by saying that I got my very first best friend joining us on the live line, and I was saying, very first best friend, why don't you tell the li- listeners who you are? Well, that's, well, that's who I am. That's, that's exactly who I am. I wanted to wish you the congratulations. You're doing a marvelous job over there. Ain't no half done with Marcus J. Marcus being the name that I gave you, because I love it, and I love you. Well, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. That's my mom, everybody, for anybody who is wondering. We got the crew in here saying, hey, mom, Hi, mom. And, and, and you got your granddaughter sitting here. Uh, hey, she, she, she's Hi. She's just grinning because she hears Nana's voice. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mom. I appreciate you calling. Love you, too. Uh, it's been a fun okay. night. It's been a lot of love. Yeah, of course, Daddy's sitting right here. And he's sending his congratulations as well. What's up, Pops? What's going on, man? That's my mom and Pop, everybody. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you doing? Hey, what's up, my brother? Congratulations <laughs> to you and your boy. Right, we appreciate it, man. There's a lot of love I'm getting at. We appreciate it. Thank you. Love y'all, man. Thank I you. I love you, Chrissy. All right, ain't no high step with Marcus J. Those are the maternal and the paternal units, y'all. Thank you so much. There's a lot of love that's going on. Big Rube is enjoying himself. He's he's kind of bugging out. Nah, he's, man, because what, I, what, what I thought, happened was I thought about Jerry Maguire when the dude got on got was on the TV, the talk show right. and he found out he got the contract and he was just like. I love you, brother. I know you're military. I still love you. <laughs> that's, what you th- that's what you're thinking. Hey, listen, before we move on, uh, we got Hakeem, who I uh, affectionately like to call Superfan because he is one of our first and longest uh, time listeners. Hit us up on the Facebook page. Cat be smoking at ooh wee. <laughs> <laughs> He's the black Lindsay Lohan, he's saying. So wow, I, I, really? somewhat, uh, I somewhat agree with that. Another thing that um, I would be remiss. I would be absolutely remiss if Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J in the What The Hell segment did not take somewhat of a political uh, turn. And that's what I'm going to do at this point. Last week, uh, you had a, a gentleman in Florida who took his gun out and shot a young man in the, sitting in the backseat of a car uh, because his music was too loud. This uh, somewhat echoed the Trayvon Martin case uh, also in Florida and this man who shot this young fella last week uh, is claiming uh, stand your ground he's saying that he felt threatened by a young man who was in a car who was sitting in the back seat of a car uh, 
this guy just pulled out his gun and he just started shooting wildly. So, Colin Banks, I'm going to start with you on this one. Um, when I heard this story, it did echo Trayvon Martin, but there's some very clear differences, which we'll get into uh, somewhat in the discussion. What's your thoughts? You know what? I see a lot of legislation getting ready to take place um, in Florida from the simple standpoint of re defining the stand your ground the stand your ground is going to have to take place inside of a home it's not going to be able to be done on the street because at this point you're looking like you're a bunch of vigilantes and that in itself is against the law in certain situations dude if you felt threatened by them why not just pull the hell off you're going to sit there and pull a gun out instead you weren't shot at they are probably in the car but you're going to pull out your gun and start capping at people. That's not that's not cool. Again, I don't know the whole situation. I don't know all the story. I can only base it off of what you know I'm reading or what I'm hearing. Um, but in every sense of the word, dude, pull the hell off. Don't be like Reginald Denny, get pulled out of the car, out of the truck in this situation, and get beat up like he did, okay? That's not necessary. Get out. Big rope. Okay, this was in Georgia or Florida? This was in Florida. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how you could stand your ground when you physically walked over there and shot him. <laughs> that, to me, standing your ground is when you've been attacked and you have to pull out your weapon to defend yourself. When you walk over there, shoot the kid in the back seat like that dude has volume controls in the back seat. Right. I mean, really, that I mean, I just think that all this stuff is really stupid and really terrible. And you know what? The first, the first thing is they're talking about. Well, I'm not racist. Well, why'd you just shoot a black kid in the back seat of a car? I mean, it's not like he came out, put a shotgun in your face, and said, "Stay in your car, old man." Right. He, he was back there listening to music. He couldn't reach the volume because he's in the back seat, and you just shot him. There's no way you're gonna get out of this one. Stay in your ground or stay in your house. I don't care. Right. You went over there and shot him. He didn't attack you, and then you got mad, and you went over there and shot him. He was playing music. A lot Stiff of people want to compare this to the Trayvon Martin case. Young man in this case uh, is Jordan Davis. Um, while the similarities are black teenagers shot by white men, I think, or not not black men, I should say, since they say Zimmerman is Hispanic. Looks white to me, but whatever. Um, his where is different, which is pretty much every point that of importance is where it's different. You've got Trayvon Martin is dead. George Zimmerman is alive, and he's the only one that was there. So it's pretty much his story and the evidence against Trayvon Martin. But where it's different with Jordan Davis is this boy was in a car with a bunch of other people who were there, who are still here, who can tell you exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And also, they had to be forced to arrest and incarcerate George Zimmerman. And they did everything they could do to make sure that he didn't go to jail, whereas the public pressure from civil rights advocates and the media and all of that stuff led to him being arrested. They did not want to put Zimmerman in jail, whereas this dude, he, when he fled, you know, they went and they got him, put him in jail. He was in jail when the story broke. Before the story broke, he was already in jail. Toyana? Um, just looking at what you guys are talking about, first my um, heart you know, goes out to the family um, or anybody who's lost a loved one uh, with situations like this. You know, it's uncalled for. My concern is it took seven to eight shots. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, really? And then on top of that, um, <laughs> he says to, I guess, to defend himself that he didn't realize he hit anybody. I think seven to eight shots, you hit something. Right. Um, even if it was somebody in the distance. Yeah, even somebody, somebody right. in the distance. And to me, that's 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 a grave um, concerns. And But the great thing about the lovely state of Florida, they believe in execution. Gotta so go, he, is, go. he is facing murder, um, an attempt at murder. So, you know, um, I'm not always for the death penalty, but for this case, um, I would consider sign them up yeah i mean you know <laughs> it, it's just it's just a sad thing because you know people like to tell you when you interject race into it that you're being racist but i don't see people shooting white folk dead in the street like this yeah i don't see people shooting chinese people dead in the street like this i don't see people you know shooting other folks dead in the street you see oftentimes it's black and latinos getting shot dead in the street like this and you make the argument that those are the ones who present themselves or those are the ones who are menacing but that's not always the case because we have two situations right here that shows you 
that it wasn't like that. I could take you back to Oakland where the dudes in the the the, the train station on New Year's where the police officer shoots him. Oh, my bad. I thought it was my taser. Really? <laughs> really. I mean, so, I mean, you see these things come up mm-hmm. oftentimes. And as a black man, it makes me angry. It makes me especially angry when somebody who's not black tries to tell me that I'm racist because I'm pissed. Well, I, what I don't like the, about this scenario, like any other, unfortunately, is that, you know, music. So I guess we all can safely assume it wasn't like he was listening to, um, you know, any country music, of course. He was probably listening to some hip hop, some rap, probably something that um, this guy didn't like. Um, but. Then again, how would he feel if a young man came to him and said, hey, I don't want to hear Garth Brooks, right. you know, and shot him seven, eight times. It's just confusing and disappointing. And again, here's another family that has lost, you know, a young man um, that could be could have been an ex-president or whoever. Right before the holidays. Before the holidays. And now we have to sit and listen to this. So Florida use your use your right for execution and i hope that he um gets what he deserves you know how to step in with marcus J. the final story i want to kind of get into in my what the hell segment i know we took a somewhat militant turn there but that was something that i wanted to get out this story is kind of kind of old but not really we didn't talk about it uh but it's definitely a what the hell uh <laughs> attorneys for Haley berry and her ex-boyfriend have settled court issues that arose after the thanksgiving day fight uh, that broke out at her home. Now, of course, we know that the fisticuffs between Gabriel Aubrey, yeah, which were the ex-boyfriend, and her fiance, uh, actor Olivier Martinez, uh, left Mr. Aubrey not only arrested, but also left him with a broken eye, broken rib, and a ton of under, uh, other injuries. Now, my advice to him, and Colin, I'm going to come to you first on this one. My advice to you, Mr. Aubrey, is if you're going to start a fight, don't get your ass kicked. Colin? You know, you know, the worst place to get beat or go to a fight is in somebody else's home. <laughs> so, you know, you got home field advantage against you. So why even run up in that piece like that? All right. That, you don't walk into somebody else's home and expect to beat them. <laughs> now, granted, there's probably some other things were said and this and this and said, your mama that. But, you know, nonetheless, dude, just walk away. Just walk away. I'm, I'm very nonviolent until you touch me. Big room. You know, first of all. As Colin said, you don't go to somebody else and expect to beat them up. But if you do plan on fighting, don't play, don't fight fair. Pick up a chair. I'm cool about picking up chairs, man. Yes, Especially sir. it's not my house. I don't okay. care. I mean, yo, get a brick if you gotta get. But nah, man, you can't go to somebody else's house, challenge them in their own house, and expect to leave fully intact. And if you do, that's because somebody else didn't hit you upside the head with a vase or something. Because, nah, that's not any of that kind of party. Oh Toyana, what's your thoughts on Halle Berry's ex getting the beat down from her current fiance? Well, you know, I, first of all, I am a fan of Halle Berry. So I try to rock the haircut myself. But, um, again, it's so misfortunate that she has to, um, again, have this tagged onto her. Um, her lifestyle you know what I mean it's sad to say that a lot of guys think the most beautiful woman she can't keep a man or she's got some male issues and this is another tag against my girl Holly and this is is really serious because this is going to impact the custody that she has with her you know her daughter which I've seen she really takes the time and loves her you know loves her child so it's going to be interesting to see um, how that plays out but I agree with both of you. You come to my house, you you think you're gonna come and fight? We'll see if he gets you in the back door. I don't think you'll make it. I mean, it's a terrible day when you go <laughs> and pick a fight and get your ass yeah. kicked, big room. Yeah, I, don't, I yeah. mean, my house. <laughs> did y'all see the? For, 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 did y'all see the, the, the picture of this dude? Yeah. Um, no, after his eyes were did, did you see the picture? Oh, yeah, his eyes were Yo, closed. his eye was it's was loud. yo. He got that what they used to call the eye oh, jam. Martinez. Yeah, uh, uh, no, uh, baby no, daddy, Gabriel Aubrey, the, the, the baby daddy. Like it look, it, oh, yeah. dang. It looks like somebody just, <laughs> kicked him in the face. Yeah, like, you ran know, over like, here with a bicycle. He looked like face. Mitch Green looked in 1986 when he got into that street brawl with your man Mike Tyson. That's what he oh, looked yeah, like. Oh, yeah, that looks terrible. You now, know? do you think this is really something that really happened in a fight, or maybe you, you don't think he kind of engrossed this himself? Nah, you, know you know can't, you can't, you can't, you can't ham up an ass whoop. Who, who, I mean, he was a he didn't fall down some stairs to get down. Nah, you can't yeah. ham up an ass whooping. That's what he got from Mr. Martinez. Uh, he, he Isn't Martinez like 
Italian or something? He's French. Yeah. Oh, man. He's a French man. Oh, see, he thought because he was French, he can just go and beat him down. He let him know that French fries just weren't made in France. I saw uh, I saw on the news what? today that uh, the the royals are about to get another new royal, the Prince William and his wife, Kate Middleton, are expecting. Now people can uh, shut up about now, it. Now, does anybody care? Because I'm on record as being one of those people that could, I, could, I swear, I, I care more about grass growing in his yard than I do. <laughs> About the Royals But I brought it up Because I know people care So that's why yeah. I wanted to hear If anybody can. Why do we care what? about them Miss Tariana really Seriously Why do we care about the Royals It's the Royal family Why do we give a damn <laughs> About them people I don't care about The price of tea in China yeah, about I, don't, I don't care about it's, Will Come on and now It's kings and queens And castles Do they have any power None of which Actually, I will ever I have think, I don't think they do no, That's they right They have no had power. power They have a title yeah, they That's haven't it. had power in years, but I you know I brought it up. It's one of those well, talking like pieces. But I seriously, like, I, I I'll tell you why I'm I'm happy for them because I really enjoyed when I was in my younger years. Enjoyed watching, you know, Lady Di, their mother. She was classy. She had style. She was very well spoken. Yeah, she was well spoken. She was, you know, she was free she going was hot. and carefree. She was very cold. She was not hot. What? I mean, don't do that, Ruben. She I was think not, she, was she was beautiful. Was easy on you know, lost your mind. She was easy on <laughs> eyes. Oh, no, I think she was beautiful. Yeah, she was. Yeah. You know, and All I right. think that with the tragedy no. that they had, <laughs> this is this is a great comeback. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being disrespectful because she's not here no more. But don't be mean. No, she's not attractive. Kate is like a million times more attractive than Di was, and she's supposed to have had the same personalities and characteristics of his mother well that was cool i mean because Di was was cool lady yeah. she was a sweet lady and she did a lot of stuff she hung I out mean, anytime you hang out with mother Teresa, you got yeah. her on the speed dial that's a good thing and you know but 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 you said she was hot that, that, that I said she's that, easy on but they always but they always say that boys marry women like their mother and women marry men like their father all right ain't no half step right. marcus j we're gonna leave it there we're gonna take our final break of the night real quick when we come back we got the rants and we got the closing. This is the big anniversary show. So we're going to ask you to join us for an extra few minutes beyond the 9 p.m. hour. So everybody gets an opportunity to say their piece. And then we're going to get out of here and watch the New York football Giants play against the Washington Redskins. Marcus J. and Handle Half Stepping. Be back in a minute. What's going on, world? Well, this is like Ken Cole from Showtown, Jersey City, New Jersey. You're listening to the best talk show out there on the internet. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. On global scale radio.net. 